Hello interwebs, Spence again, just doing my next installment of my video boxing journey blog. So thank you for watching once again. I may actually, um, this may be one of the last blogs that I put out there fairly publicly. I may lock it down, I may put some passwords on my blogs or whatnot because uh, I will be um, getting my opponent assigned soon and once that happens you kind of want to keep your your camp private um, and uh, make sure that you're not giving away anything that could give them an advantage so uh, in any case uh, thanks for watching so far and I'll keep you updated on that if you really want to follow stuff um, I may lock up my website I may lock up the videos and stuff but you know if you're a friend of mine message me on Facebook and I'll give you a password or something I'm sure I'll be able to set up something like that so let's uh, let's get on with this it is March 21st uh, we are 50 days out uh, 50 days it's actually 49 days 21 hours the last time I checked and if you go to my um, my fight website uh, there's a countdown clock there so that is um, part of uh, an awareness that I'm keeping and it's been a lot of fun to do that because I'm about two months into the training camp and I've got about, you know, a little less than two months to go, a total of um, almost four months of, uh, of training for this. Uh, if you recall, they changed the date on me. Um, so I ended up having double the training time, which meant double the fun, double the journey, double the discoveries, double the, the, uh, the results. So I'm very happy with that situation. I've just spent quite a bit of time appreciating that. Uh, it has made a big difference. Little things. Like, for instance, like uh, one of my earlier blogs, I was like, so I'm drinking a lot of water now, and I held up this um, this little mason jar thing. Uh, those of you who know me know I'm addicted to drinking vessels, uh, bottles, water bottles, sports bottles. There's <laughs> there's two right there. <laughs> one giant one, one medium-sized one, and I uh, I just love the things. But anyway, so this, I, this was what I held up to indicate I'm drinking more water. And one of the indications of one of the transformations, discoveries, evolutions on this journey is now this used to be like more water to me. This is now more water to me. So uh, definitely <laughs> I just drink water all day long. And it started out with ice, lots of ice. Um, and, um, and you know, I used to put, I used to make drinks and stuff, make, you know, different um, supplement drinks and stuff. But now I just drink water. I put a little lemon, a little lime in it. No ice. Uh, and, I, and that's just the way I like it. So um, that's been cool. And you know, uh, putting citrus uh, juice in your water actually helps you not get kidney stones. And I had one of those um, about a year and a half ago. Uh, I do not want to repeat that experience. So uh, that has been a little bonus. I'm, I feel kind of weird right now because uh, I'm kind of shivering because I just did an ice bath. And we'll talk more about those. But if it seems like, <laughs> like I'm a little stuttering or nervous, it's actually me shivering from the ice bath, uh, my core temperature is kind of low. We'll talk more about that in a minute. But uh, just to review, the fight is May 9th still. Um, there are tickets, and you can get them at the UFC gym up in Northern Virginia uh, for the fight night. I don't know if they've gone on sale yet. They do sell. They will sell out, and they will sell fast. In fact, they had uh, to turn people away um, last time they had a fight night. So um, I will try to get... If, you, if anybody wants to come to the fight, um, I'm going to start making a list, uh, and I'll just buy the tickets for folks. And if you want, you can pay me back um, for those or whatnot. I think it's going to be 10 bucks or something. Um, and, but I will need to pick them up. And in fact, I'm going to have to make arrangements since I'm down in Tampa, Florida, um, to, uh, to do that um, remotely. So, But anyway, Facebook me or whatever, and I'll... Uh, I'll put some tickets aside if you think it's something that you might want to come see. It's going to be in Woodbridge, Virginia, probably at a bar they're hoping. Last one they had was at a UFC gym, um, but this one will probably be at a bar. So they, I think it's more room for them and less cleanup and less. Uh, um, it's actually easier to uh, to put up a ring in a bar than it is to um, take down uh, 30 punching bags um, that are hanging in a gym that is a working you know, gym, and then have them back up for the next day. So anyway, that's, uh, that's that. I am in Tampa, Florida. Again, I spent about a month up in Northern Virginia training uh, with my trainer up there at UFC Gym. 
Um, Stennis uh, Floyd is training me. Just he's a great trainer, and I've been working hard with him, and um, he's just really encouraged me to be patient and to do the work and to just uh, let things build at the pace they want to build. He uh, early on he said Rome wasn't built in a day, and we just went to work and just started doing the drills and building the skills and stuff. And I still feel like I have a, a, a long way to go, but. I have definitely, um, definitely in this kind of audacious um, uh, goal of learning, you know, what it is to box and to train for a fight and everything, I, I have definitely come a long way. Um, I'm loving my workouts now, I'm really feeling a groove, um, getting uh, to where I can impose my flow. That's, that's, I've got that on my bathroom mirror, impose my flow. That's what I'm learning fighting is about a lot in great part is to get into your flow and to assert that flow and maintain that flow because as I've been doing sparring I've been noticing um, the experience of you know getting bang you know hit in the face just boom and you, you there's a moment of shock like boom something's wrong like uh, and and it interrupts your flow and, and no long and so you go into this reactive, kind of a state where you start to go into survival mode and you know even people who do competitive or combative sports will know what I'm talking about it's this thing where you stop having a game plan and you stop working strategies or doing the things that you've trained to do and you just start going into reaction mode just just to try to survive the event and get through it and that's not that's not the way to win. So, um, you know, a lot of this game I'm learning is is to develop your flow and to create your your power and your groove, and then to be able to stay in it. Whether you're getting hit and bang bang, the punches are coming in, and you're taking heavy contact, um, but not to not to regard as there's anything wrong. Not to take that as there's a horrible horrible situation, it's a big crisis, to go, no, that's normal, and I'm going to stay in my groove, I'm going to stay in my my stance, I'm going to keep my hands up, I'm going to move forward, I'm going to push and continue to assert the things that I do, rather than just being in reaction to what uh, what my opponent's doing. So that has been an amazing lesson, and an amazing lesson for life, um, and that was my intention in taking this journey, is to take those life lessons along, and that has been a huge one, you know, where... It's all about finding your groove in life and, um, and, and imposing your flow, just imposing it on the universe, saying, this is my flow and um, I'm going to stay in it. I'm going to stay on my program and I'm not going to wake up and just react to everything that happens. I'm going to create my day consciously. I'm going to create the things that I do and training is no different. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Let's get to the, some of the nitty gritty. My fighting weight is 180 pounds. We started off, at, it was gonna be 185, but it kinda got lower as I got more confident that I could get to that weight. I was talking to my Florida trainer, Jake, today, and he thinks I should just go lower than 180. So I'm thinking maybe we'll go 175, because I am uh, currently <laughs> at one, uh, and that's my new goal is to be 185 by April 1st. I had this um, I had this goal uh, I had this goal to get to uh, to 185 by March 15th, which was the original date of the fight. Um, and uh, I'm at 186.5 right now, which is down 17 pounds, which I'm very happy with. And last week was kind of a travel week, and I thought, all right, you know, goals are important, um, but I didn't really need to make that goal. It, it, it just would have. It was. I was driving like the two days before I would have done my way in and made that goal. And I just thought, what I really want to do is um, is kind of adjust that again. And um, so I'm happy with where I'm at. And what I noticed, and I'm listening to my body, is that what my body's saying is that's great. Now you need to focus on building your strength because I've lost the weight. Um, and I just wasn't feeling strong last week. So the last thing I wanted to do was, you know, go and cut, even if it was just two pounds, do a two pound weight cut, and then just be 
you know, for no particular reason, arbitrarily, so I could see a number on the scale and meet a, an arbitrary goal. The goal was great. It got me to where I am. But I kind of let it, let it go. And uh, my new goal is April 1st, um, which is in just 10 days. I'd like to be at 185, April 1st. And then I'm just going to hover there, because even if, even if I fight at 175, I can do that 10-pound weight cut um, in the last week before, uh, before the fight. No problem. And then, you know, and then put some weight back on in the 24 hours before the fight. So um, I'm very happy with, with where I'm sitting. Uh, the nutrition has been going great. I'm, it, it's really interesting. Um, Mike Dolce, who I've been following for my nutrition, he's the, the trainer for a lot of the big um, UFC fighters. He talks a lot about, uh, uh, he talks a lot about, you know, it's going to be a process. It's a transition that you're going to go through. And I thought, well, you know, I'm just going to go with the full diet from day one. And I'm noticing that there are things like, for instance, this, this was a transition. Like I thought, Hey, this is to me, this is a lot of water. Now suddenly this is, this is the amount of water that I'll drink, uh, you know, several times a day. Um, and I'm just learning how to, how to make the food better and it's becoming less work in some cases to, to, to get the nutrition together. In fact, that was more about um, organization and a little bit of education and learning. Um, and I'm just really happy with what I'm eating right now. There is this idea of um, emotional eating. We talked about hydration, but emotional eating. Um, I'm just finding that now that I eat six to seven meals a day, and by the way, when I add that seventh meal, every time I've added a seventh meal, because because I flip and feel like it at night, it's like midnight or something, or one or two in the morning, and I just want to eat that la that next meal. I wake up the next day and I'm actually lighter um, than I <laughs> than I was the day before. Um, so I'm learning to listen to my body, which is super cool, um, and also, you know. I, I love this idea that Mike talks about. He, he talks about reward meals, not cheat meals. Because, like, in some amazing, really talented, nutrition oriented, fitness oriented people that I know you still use the term cheat meal. And it's got guilt built right into it. Like, you're going to, like, and, and you want to enjoy. If, if, if you're giving yourself some kind of reward, some kind of other meal that's outside of the parameters of what you're eating to meet your goal. You want to enjoy that. You want to. It's a reward. And and the other thing is that, you know, what you want to reward yourself with, may change as well. And I guess I, I'm trying not to talk about other people. I'm really talking about myself. But what I want to reward myself with, has changed. Like, I I do reward meals, but I haven't done any. Like I did Valentine's Day. We went out and we had like a gourmet dinner. But you know there was, pasta and I didn't eat that. And the rest of it was like. We had duck nachos and all these like really great things, but there was nothing horrible in the meal. Uh, there was cheesecake, you know. After th that, but that's like the only that's like the only departure since Janu January that I have made. I'm still I'm still like shivering from the ice bath. Whew. My I, they say once you um, once you do the ice bath for like three hours afterwards, you'll burn like 800 calories. So we'll have to see if that affects my weight in the morning. Um, so anyway, reward meal. So I uh, really enjoyed that. Um, I really enjoyed that uh, meal, and um, it did take me a week to like get my momentum back on the weight loss. But uh, now, when I do a reward meal, it's like we go to Outback. I get a steak and a and a sweet potato, and I'll take um, with um, no uh, no brown sugar on it, and they'll just have cinnamon and butter, and I'll take the butter and scoop it off and and put it aside and so it has just a tiny bit of butter on it and like broccoli and a big like the biggest outback steak like the 18 ounce steak or 12 ounce whatever is the of the their signature steak like I'll get the biggest one and um, and I love it and I don't I'm not eating I'm not having a beer with it or anything I'm just having water um, or a glass of wine right and then the next day again without fail the day after outback night um, I'm waking up and I'm actually lighter than I was the day before. Um, so, you know, my concept of rewarding myself has really shifted. And 
and uh, that has been a cool part. The, one of the other things that I'm really learning a lot about is visualization and beliefs. So one of the things from my background in NLP, neurolinguistic programming, which is a branch of uh, behavioral and cognitive psychology um, and that I did some doctoral studies in, and, uh, and there's actually a whole branch now that's emerging called positive psychology, which um, which is really cool. It sounds kind of trite. It sounds kind of trite. Like it's not all like um, positive thinking. It's just psychology is about getting, taking people with neuroses, you know, um, or for lack of a better term, um, people that that feel they're broken or have something wrong, right? And then fixing them and getting them back to wholeness, right? Well, positive psychology is actually taking people and moving them from wholeness, from a, from zero, up, optimizing, right? So it's a really exciting field of psychology. But anyway, so um, uh, Temple University offers um, offers a doctoral degree in it. I, I actually might look into that. But anyway, so um, visualization and stuff. So I've known for a long time that um, visualization um, has been you know, it's a great tool, and it's certainly something that, 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 that I can use to create the experience that I want to create, right? To When you visualize, all right, so I want to create this, um, this experience in my life, maybe it's a goal you want to reach or whatnot. If you visualize it, and when I visualize it, um, I, it actually, it's like a magnet. I become like a magnet for attracting that um, particular thing into my life and then actually seeing it occur. Um, there's a lot of stuff on the law of attraction and stuff. And I, when The Secret came out, there's a famous movie and book called The Secret. I was very turned off by it because it, at the time, everything around that was like all about the, the idea of quote manifesting things. It was all, they, it, it's, it was done in a very, in my opinion, in a very trite way. They, they would always go to examples about who wants to make more money, you know, and, and you would see that at motivational seminars. They would say, who here, by a show of hands, would like to make more money? And then they would go, come on, that's not even half of you. Who wants to make more money? And then there would be like this, like, yay, like slightly amplified, apathetic, like, oh, yay, you know, like a, that people felt like, well, I'm paying for this. I guess I should be enthusiastic. And it was kind of soulless, and and it didn't. It lacked like power, and and um, I don't know how to describe it. But anyway, it always turned me off because they're like, you know, money. Why not focus on happiness or focus on um, something that's real and inspiring? Most people, I don't think, they're not inspired by goals like making more money. Honestly, it's the things that the more money will get you. And when you get clear on the things that you want to get, you know, money, money is something that can occur along the way. It can be part of the vision, part of the compelling vision. So boxing for me has been a part of that compelling vision, that thing that um, it's been a it's been a proving ground and a learning arena for me. <clears throat> it's been a clear space that. It has been free of politics um, and conflicts of interest and um, any and all negative influences. Like there's not a single person, not, not a coach, not a person who works or trains at any of the gyms I train at, not a single person whom I consider on my team, and that includes my chiropractor, my massage therapists, and all of those folks and my family and my girlfriend and, and my brother and you know just all of these people that have all and friends you know they've all offered their support there hasn't there hasn't been any negativity in it so that has really put me in a situation where um, I can then know that any negativity that I'm experiencing is coming from me. Any limitation that I'm experiencing is coming from me. Because the tendency is when we have these experiences to set, you know, to blame other people, right? To say, oh, well, you know, I'd be successful, but this person is getting in the way because they're being like this or they're doing this, right? So this has been just mind blowing. And part of it 
has been adopting, um, looking at my beliefs and, and looking at the things that I visualize um, and, and creating um, ways of visualizing. There's this technique called vision board where you make, you know, you, you make a collage, you know, of, the, of images of the thing you want or whatnot. And through this, I realized that every time I do an event as a comedian, as a performer, I create a website and, then, and I put up videos and I do emails and that whole website and our Facebook page and all the images I create, that is my vision board. So I created a website for this event and it's got a, a page for my nutrition and a, and a dashboard where you can see everything I eat is logged and everything I do when I train is logged and my every stat and my blood pressure and my resting heart rate and my weight and my body fat percentage is logged and it's all there and the goals are there. there's a whole page of just goals and I realized that you know I sort of intuitively did this because like, this feels like the right thing to do like I want to share this I want to bring people along I want to be able to coordinate my team because my trainers will go to that site and look at what I'm doing but intuitively it felt like the right thing to do now what I'm realizing is that is my vision board um, I, you know, everything I post online, Facebook or Instagram, any of those places has become my vision board. And, and in the space of other people um, observing and commenting and, and whatnot, um, my vision has been able to start to take shape in the world. So that has been a big um, uh, discovery that when you visualize, you're not always just sitting down and I will start visualizing now, ohm or whatever. It's not always like that. You're not, yeah, I'm not, you're not always doing affirmations, but you are always doing affirmations in repeating the things that you say to yourself in that voice in your head. So that has been, um, it, it's like something I knew, but to experience it profoundly and in, in, a, in a very inspirational context in, in, in within this context of this, this boxing challenge, um, that has been, I've gotten great clarity on that. So that's been very empowering and just, I'm very excited to talk about it. This is going to be a long um, boxing blog, so it's probably going to be like half hour. So <laughs> thanks for watching if you watch all this. Um, so what else is going on? I also, um, oh, beliefs, you know, like I've tried to adopt the right beliefs, like, uh, Every time I find a useful belief, I'll put it on my website or I'll post it somewhere or I post it on a, literally on a big post-it note on my bathroom mirror. Um, you, you can trust yourself. You can trust the challenges. Uh, impose my flow. Um, different things are up there on my bathroom mirror. And uh, because these are things that once you believe them, um, when you adopt the beliefs that people that are getting a result that you would like to also get for yourself, uh, are holding for themselves those beliefs you actually can leverage those beliefs to get that result so that's that's from one of the principles of, of NLP and I've tried to use that here by finding out like how people are getting their results how are these um, some of these coaches I'm training with are um, amazing and, and and have achieved a lot in their lifetime so I'm trying to figure out what do they what do they believe you know the my coach uh, Stennis was saying uh, Forget going to hell. Forget it. We're going to go to hell and we're going to set up camp there. That's where we're going to live. And, and it's amazing how powerful that belief is. Even, even before he said that, I had a different way of thinking about it. I was think, I would say, you know, about the time that I get tired is when the workout starts. Right? When I start to get tired, that's when the workout just started. Like, that's when I finished warming up. Like, about the time I start to feel like that tiny little voice that wants to quit, that's when the real work starts. Um, and I like to get to that really uncomfortable place in the training and then just go, yeah, like I'm here, and then go say to myself, now we're doing it, you know, like I'm turning up the heat, this is a place that would be uncomfortable for someone, I love it here, and welcome, the, welcome to my office, you know. Um, and it's a very empowering belief to live in that in that space, that space of being challenged, of, of being comfortable with that level of exertion and challenge and energy. So finding what those beliefs are and kind of installing them by whatever means. And, and, and there's so many things that we're already, it's so simple to do the things I'm doing, like putting up post-it notes and, 
and you know posting on Instagram or whatever, but and then then just looking at those things and looking at them and thinking about them when I train and trusting uh, when I do that that uh, I am setting myself up to install those beliefs. So anyway, that's that was all about it, all those things. So uh, we already talked about facing adversity. Um, that's when you need it. That's when you want to impose your flow. You got to keep your flow, keep your zone. Those beliefs come in handy, and uh, that has been a big, a big part of this journey is understanding when the opposition comes, and it comes. I mean, I, <laughs> I had so much blood coming out of me <laughs> when I was sparring a few weeks ago. It was hitting the window of the gym. My brother got a picture of just the window splattered with the blood coming out of my nose and um, that is a curious experience to uh, to hear the crunch and to um, and to have your inner voice go there's something wrong right and and to feel what it's like to feel sorry for yourself in that moment and I had another martial arts teacher Manny he uh, teaches Sistema it's a Russian martial art that I've studied for a number of years and uh, it's a very tough training style. It's what they teach the special ops uh, in uh, in Russia, and uh, he was talking about enduring pain. And the first thing that you don't want is to feel sorry for yourself, or if you're training with someone, to feel sorry for them. Uh, you want to be building people up and building yourself up, and and feeling sorry doesn't do that. You want to think that anything that's occurring is making you stronger. It's building you up. And I really started to realize that there are those moments when, when that glove boom hits me in the face where I go ah and I feel sorry for myself and uh, and I'm okay that that happened because I went oh yeah there it is that's what it's like to feel sorry for yourself and um, and that has really allowed me to begin to re-examine how do I how do I deal with that moment of adversity how do I deal with that moment of uh, of that of choice like how am I going to take this input I've learned you know what you know the first thing you get hit in the face a few times is the unfamiliar so you you go to your snap reactions and then as you get more familiar with different experiences it becomes um, easier to make a choice uh, and it's another life lesson I'm learning right so this stuff is huge and crazy and awesome um, so that has been that's been a, a really powerful realization and uh, yeah, anyway, I've been talking enough about that, but let's talk about those ice baths. Uh, I just started doing um, ice baths this week uh, because it, the training is, is rough. Um, it so far has been an experience of really pushing myself, training six, seven days a week, um, you know, varying the training. Uh, I haven't been doing like a Monday I do this and then Tuesday I do triceps and kneecaps and then on Thursday we work our glutes and our you know it's not like a bodybuilding re regime you're always boxing you're always doing stuff and so the trick is to pick themes like today my theme was um, just to s keep a steady pace the whole time so that when I start a round I'm at a certain pace and when I finish the round it's the same pace because again that's that can be demoralizing for your opponent if you were just just keeping that pace the whole damn time. So um, that <clears throat> has been an uh, interesting uh, thing to reflect upon. Um, trusting myself uh, to kind of vary my training and pick very specific goals and organize my training to reach those goals, but at the same time to listen to myself and go, right, what do I feel like today? You know, and some, some days you need to focus on recovery. So a lot of foam rolling, a lot of stretching, and these ice baths. When you, when you take a bath in water that's you know, in the neighborhood of 50 degrees, um, your body has a certain reaction. If you want to look um, uh, up, look up Dr. Oz and ice baths, and he has a little thing. Uh, I may even put the, uh, the link um, somewhere but you know if you go to YouTube look, that's my ice maker because I used all the ice um, the uh, if you look up uh, he has a great explanation of what it does for you it allows it shrinks certain blood vessels and certain white blood cells don't get through the walls of the of the vein it doesn't go into the tissue which causes inflammation and different things and um, 
and the reports are you do these ice baths and your recovery is much quicker and inflammation in your joints and in your muscles um, is greatly reduced so however it is a very interesting and um, challenging endurance experience I'm only doing like a 12 minute ice bath um, and I, again like I said I'm still shivering from it my I, I, I'm still cold from it but uh, I'm just letting my body warm back up slowly um, so I, I wanted to actually video it and, and I think I will include that video that uh, video of the ice bath uh, in this blog um, and uh, we'll go to that in a second but uh, part of that was when I saw, it, I'll talk. You'll you'll hear me talk about it in the video. But I thought it would be a cool experience to share with everybody, and also kind of keep me in my positive zone because I knew, you know, I'm there with friends, um, watching me do go through this experience, and it just it just kept me kept me in a good positive space to share it. So I appreciate the opportunity to share it with you. Uh, so let's take a look at that. <laughs> Alright, it's ice bath time. I'm in the bathroom and we are filling the tub with, uh, with cold water. It's, it's tepid. It's as cold as it comes out of the tap. My girlfriend is sitting on the FaceTime with me while we do this for support. She's watched me ice various limbs, and she knows the agony that uh, the process. Now, I took an ice bath a couple days ago, but it wasn't nearly as cold. And I went to the gas station. Um, and it, it was like everything I had in my um, in my refrigerator, uh, all that ice, and then like eight gel pack ice things that you'd ice your shoulder or whatever with. Through those as well. Very cold, but. Uh, I thought I would do a bag of ice tonight, uh, but when I tried to buy the ice, um, they had a minimum $3 charge for a debit card, so I had to buy <laughs> two bags of ice. So this is an order of magnitude colder than what I had planned, on. but this is uh, this is one. Of them. This is what I'm. In. This is what I need to do to win, right? So we're gonna do this. All right, that's all in there now. I got this meat thermometer. We're gonna check. That needle is dropping. I want this to be around um, 50 degrees or 55. So I saw Dr. Oz do an ice bath, and I figured, um, and he was doing it like on, in this big giant tub in front of his whole audience, and it occurred to me like, man, that's got to be easier when he's in front of a big audience because he's gonna be, <laughs> he's gonna be a little more stoic about it. So I figured this would be a good idea to video this very cold bath. You know, it's in the 50s now, so I'm going to go ahead and get in. Uh -huh. I have this little egg timer. We're going to do five minutes on my lower body, and then I'm going to dip the rest of my body in, and we'll go five minutes. And Alexi, you will make sure that I do not get out of the tub, okay? <laughs> All right. I'm wearing socks <laughs> so that so that my toes don't freeze. This is the hardest part. Right here. Oh. Okay, sweetheart, can you start a timer for five minutes? Okay. It's, 
It's all right. It's not that bad. Fire. <laughs>
one minute and a half. I think we're going to go an extra minute, okay? So, just for, just for toughness. Mm. Oh, so good. I'm kind of hitting that place of um, appreciation. Oh, this is so good for my body. I wish I could get it to where I could get my whole body under the water, but my tub dust doesn't fill that much. Expensive IKEA egg timer. Maybe it has like a 10 second <laughs> warning. That's probably what it is. It's pretty fancy. Those Swedes. And Alexi's clock is now zero. Give me one more minute, sweetheart. Yeah, there you go. She restarted the clock. Maybe even two minutes. We'll see. Oh, uh, because now it feels like a warm, fuzzy blanket. All, all my ancestors are singing to me, I can hear it. Not to drip on my MacBook. All right. Whew. That wasn't too bad. That wasn't too bad. Um, am I red? <laughs> yeah, she says yeah. Right. Well, um, I think next time I'm gonna do um, three bags of ice. Maybe four. Try to get it down to like 50 degrees. Just, it was a nice amount of time to be in there. I wouldn't want to hang out there for too long. All right, cool. Well, thanks. Thanks, YouTube. Thanks for following my blog. At some point, actually, I will start shivering. And uh, as I warm up again. And I just wouldn't, I just wait that out. But the cool thing is, uh, last time I did the ice bath, I went to sleep like that, like it made me very sleepy afterwards. So. All right. Thanks, everybody. And that's about it. So I am still warming up here, um, and uh, still kind of shivering from the uh, from the bath. And tomorrow. Um, We'll see, you know, that was the coldest bath I've taken, so we'll see how I feel tomorrow. And uh, also, I'll report back on my next blog whether there was any, I, not that I did it for weight loss, but I'm just curious, you know, to see what that will do to, uh, to my weight. And i got to get up early tomorrow because I'm meeting uh, my trainer at the gym at the crack of dawn, 9 a.m., um, <clears throat> which is very early for me. That's it. Hey, look, really appreciate you guys and your support um, and all your positive comments. If there's anything else you're curious about, you know, ask me on Facebook or, or YouTube, and uh, I'll include it in my next blog. But uh, I'm keeping on this road, and um, I uh, am just having a ball. It has just been amazing. I, I, 
taken the time away from comedy. Uh, I, I am producing a DVD right now, um, so you know a little bit of balance has been in order to kind of juggle a few projects and whatnot. But this has been mainly just me training for this fight, um, and it's just it's just been such a great opportunity uh, and life experience and. Um, I'm just enjoying the heck out of it. So thanks everybody for watching, and I will see you uh, uh, when I see you. Thanks so much. Bye.